what we find is that it has the fingerprint. It bears the hallmark of a slowdown in the North Atlantic uh, ocean circulation pattern that we call the uh, meridional overturning circulation. It's a fancy term uh, for what is sometimes called the conveyor belt. Okay, but we're talking about uh, that what we've observed so far may indeed be related to a meltwater pulse that we've seen come off of Greenland. Is that correct? That's right. That, that, that very interesting sort of blip that we see in the 1960s where you know, what we find is that that circulation pattern was uh, steadily decreasing through the 20th century. Um, and in fact, uh, that appears to be happening faster and sooner than what the climate models predict. So we were already seeing, even a century ago, a, a slowing of the circulation pattern, at least as inferred from uh, our findings. Um, but then when you got into the 1960s, there was a very sudden, fairly dramatic decrease, uh, a, a spike, a negative spike that took that circulation pattern um, down by about 25% in magnitude over a very short period of time. Uh, but then we recovered. We're still on the downward trend, but we didn't go into a full-blown collapse. We recovered from that negative spike. And what we think may very well be happening here is by the 1960s, there was already enough uh, melting uh, of ice, of glacial ice taking place to freshen the North Atlantic enough to, to really begin to place this circulation system into an unstable regime where it can potentially decrease rapidly. In the event that we saw a half century ago, in the 1960s, 1970s, it only decreased by about 25% and then recovered. But you know what? We're melting a lot more ice now than we were a half century ago. And there is the distinct possibility that we could see, soon see an event more dramatic than what we saw in the 1960s. We could potentially see a full-blown collapse of the AMOC, and, and that would be far sooner than most climate models indicate. Another example where the models uh, appear to be somewhat conservative in terms of what they predict, uh, predict versus what we see actually happening, what we see playing out. Do we see any uh, uh, impact on uh, European weather from this? Undoubtedly, uh, there would be a, an impact uh, on European weather. Um, and in fact, that event in the 1960s, 1970s, uh, is called uh, sometimes called the Great Salinity Anomaly because it was uh, associated with very fresh waters in the in the region where sinking normally happens, sinking of surface waters in the North Atlantic. Um, and again, we think that that Great Salinity Anomaly may indeed have been tied to a, a decrease in this overturning circulation. Um, well, the Great Salinity Anomaly certainly was associated with some unusual weather patterns um, in Europe and in parts of North America. So to the extent that that's an analog or to the extent that the Younger Dryas, again, you know, that uh, event in the, in the deep past 10,000 years ago where we saw uh, a complete collapse, we think, of the AMOC. And that certainly changed ocean circulation patterns. It changed uh, wind patterns, the pattern of the jet stream, because when you change ocean temperatures and you change uh, temperature uh, contrasts around uh, over the surface of the earth, that in turn changes wind patterns, that changes the behavior of the jet stream. So it would be very surprising if a collapse of this, this uh, ocean circulation pattern today did not also change wind patterns patterns of rainfall and drought in, in a pretty dramatic way, at least over parts of the, the northern hemisphere.